Hello, everybody. This is Captain Sweep of the Very Secret Plan and Planetary Guardians, and I'm here with Yogi Shambhu, our uh, Commander in Chief in Victoria. And Yogi, I just want to ask you about your thoughts about the present political situation on the planet. Things are changing so quickly. Uh, this week, what is in your uh, your sights for what you think is significant and important? Well, uh, what's been going on has been there's an extension of the border, uh, it, the closing between the states and Canada. That's for another month. They're talking about uh, us not returning back to normal uh, for about 12 to 18 months. And really, they're saying now uh, pretty openly uh, that um, things will never, never return back to what we thought is normal. Um, what we thought of normal in December. Uh, so look at the school systems right now. They're talking about a whole revamping of the school schedule where when kids go back, they are going to be fractioning up classes and extending the class hours so that they're trying to patch work all these kids still going to school. But from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., that school is going to to be open and so that's just a little bit there of of how they are really trying to maintain social distancing uh well uh bringing things back open we have 120 active cases in hospitals of covid right now in bc we we have 4500 beds just laying completely empty in case we have a surge in cases in BC. And uh, there's a general uh, unrest or uh, what is going on that is starting to happen uh, amongst more and more people um, that I'm in contact with, that I'm seeing around. We hear uh, people even starting to gather in Vancouver where uh, you are saying, look, this has gone on too long. Uh, we don't feel that this is a legitimate enough threat to the general populace to keep us all locked down because we're talking about not only a, you know, what is going to be the pervading um, fallout of this? Is it going to be health dominant or is it going to be financially dominant and really the biggest thing is going to be our economic crash it really is happening right now and how is the government responding they're talking about loans you know in canada that is really the biggest thing they're talking about well if you have a problem now if you have a business now that is failing well then we'll give you a loan that then you have to pay back uh you know next year and so how is that going to help when someone's trying to dig themselves out of a hole? So you have a lot of people going, well, the solution that you're providing us doesn't pan out. It doesn't make sense. And you have this um, threat that really has leveled off. There isn't that many new cases right now in BC specifically. Mm -hmm. And they are really looking at us in BC going, well, what's happening? Why are you guys not spiking in the way that we anticipated? But they are threatening. They are saying, well, more's to come. We aren't, you know, through the thick of it. So, you know, uh, stay, stay uh, vigilant and, and stay frightened of this. And so that's a bit about what's going on. We're looking at Alberta as having the highest unemployment rate in Canada right now. Um, and so their uh, response is, again, a bailout of uh, the oil and gas industry and the stimulus package saying, well, here, we're going to clean up uh, old wells that have been abandoned by companies that just basically said, well, screw it, we are getting out of the business. And so they just abandoned these dirty wells. And so they're saying, well, look, we are coming in and going to help stimulate mil uh, millions of jobs by uh, giving you the opportunity to clean up these old wells. Okay, but again, we're looking at a tired old industry that is failing. And we have Russia and Saudi Arabia trying to battle right now uh, and, and really just tanking our whole market, a market that is dying anyway. So 
when when will Albertans, my family is from Alberta, and so I can relate to that nostalgic feeling. But when are we just going to actually start to move into the future and not die a slow death? And the coronavirus uh, economic fallout is just making this even worse. No one is driving. No one is, you know. And thank God, because the golden... The silver lining around all this is, is that there is some short-term benefit to the planet, but what is about to happen is a rollout of a whole bunch of things. Uh, privatizing, we're you know, Trump is bailing out everyone that is failing from the airline industry to the cruise line industry, and he's giving a whole bunch of new freedoms to the private healthcare sector as well. So that's what it has been rolling through my mind is just looking at all the things that are happening while we're all locked down. And I've been feeling like I've been wanting to organize um, my relations so that I can get information, I can exchange information. And that's why when I started to talk to you about what your special announcement is, I started to get really excited. So I just want to throw it back to you and go in the midst of so much activity, so much information, how can people now actually pair up, group up, and so that they can actually start getting empowered and clear exchange of information and action. So uh, yeah, throwing it over to you. Thanks for that assessment. I think that there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, kind of wondering who to believe and wondering uh, where to put their time and attention now because they have a lot more time and attention and it, it should be put to good use. And one thing, as you know, I've been working on this operating system called the Inflow Matrix and for the longest time, it's just been a design on maps. And now uh, we have a Mr. Get It Done in New Zealand who's, who's a programmer who's uh, starting to help build uh, this, this uh, program and I just want to share with you the start of it. And it's looking at how to look at different chat rooms. And it's, you know, software doesn't usually use conceptual models to organize the software. They're a lot more functional based. They, they, the programmers have a certain mindset or software designers have a certain mindset within a certain kind of way of seeing the world. And, and what I was seeing now is when you use conceptual models, it's very different for how you look at the languaging for what you have at the top of your program. Let me see if I can uh, share session. So if you look at this, we have one-on-one, -on -one, we have the media team, we have the superhero team, we have the shared knowledge community, and we have the issue coalition. So just before we go anywhere else with that, I want to ask you, what does that say to you, just seeing these? Yeah, it, um, it looks like you have different focuses where people feel compelled to act um, and get involved in uh, solutions um, and where they want to be focusing. Um, and also you have, so you have, uh, I, I see you have the media team. And now I'm really curious about what the superhero team is, obviously, that really does jump out. But I'm wondering, is the shared knowledge community, this is for um, people exchanging information on specific issues and furthering discussion? Is that, uh, and so is that what I'm getting here? Well, I'm just, I'm just curious, because you know my work to some extent, but there's a lot you don't know. And I'm just curious around language and just sort of what you see in terms of um, anything else. I mean, I'm always interested to hear what someone says before I say anything. Yeah, so it seems like we're going from the most broad to the most specific or, you know, the largest group kind of catch net uh, to to the smallest, to uh, the most specific. And so uh, 
it seems to go from from like a coalition to a community to a team and then you're one on one so i see that as uh being some as something here yeah and that's that's looking again at conceptual models and looking at you know we have a lot of software and you can put it into groups and categories in a sense but there's nothing really giving you those russian doll embedded systems so if, if we go over here in the one-on-one, you know, this is your basic chat room, right? And so at some point, this is just the beginning, but I'll be able to chat one-on-one -on -one with, with anyone else that is sort of within this whole game or idea. But then there are media teams of four people. So in here, now we have our, our Planetary Guardian media team, which is just contained to your media team. It's kind of like, um, it's very different you talk one-on-one -on -one with people it's very different talk to a larger broader you know chat room where there's 100 people in there or 20 people in there or whatever and, and there isn't a distinction of the group so what in planetary guardians we have a distinction of groups and so the media team is four people and then the super team the superhero team is five teams five media teams of four people that creates 20 people so now you've got a larger uh, you know, you step into being a superhero when you are around other superheroes. And the media team is the beginning of you teaming up. But then if you can get 20 people working together, you've got a pretty powerful force. But you got to get four people working together first. Mm. So if you have your superhero team, then in the shared knowledge community, there's seven superhero teams. There's 144 people in a shared knowledge community. Now, if you almost see like each chakra has 20 people. So like we're building a larger super intelligent organism, which for now is called a short shared knowledge community. Where there's 144 people. So now imagine every town in BC having a shared knowledge community. And then the issue coalition is looking at you know whether it's the, the salmon whether it's the old world forest whether it's the pipeline there's a number of different issues that a whole bunch of different people are, are needed to solve the problem and what we're looking at is creating a media system that we're using the media to solve the problem we're not just doing a corporate you know interpretation for the people that are paying that corporation to give that interpretation we need to solve the issues on our planet we need to solve the issues in our in our on our coastline and i see that it's the communication system that we need to do so and so this is the beginning this is just a very simple version that we're going to you know the, each of these is going to be broken down in a bit of a different way and now we're going to be able to add in conversation types you know in my card set you've got the different types of conversations and if you're starting out with an analysis and then you go into some sort of design specs and then you go into a brainstorm each of these is a different way of communicating. And so I'm gonna bring in the, the, the concept of the conversational types in here and many other ideas that I've been playing with that I didn't kind of get that we're just needing to sort of program the field, create the room that everyone knows, oh, this is this kind of conversation and this is what we're trying to do. And then to have the conversation, then you can print it, you can share it, uh, you can do whatever you want with it. but. I want to change the nature of communication on the planet. Mm. Mm. Well, this is really, and uh, I've never seen such a, um, uh, a choose your own adventure where, it, you know, if someone wants to be having a chat about a specific um, mission, a specific issue, if they're, if they have something to contribute, to that, then they can actually go into that. You know, when we look at, say, Facebook, uh, you have a lot of of people talking about issues, but they're all um, they're all spread out. It, it really is difficult, to, or there's no way of actually getting um, all of your different groups under you know one uh, program so that you can jump from from page to page without it uh yeah uh, without having all these tabs open and it just doesn't work it, it really keeps people rather separate 
uh, and uh, in their silos. So it seems like y this is an, a, uh, a real attempt to uh, resolve the silo effect that's happening. And that's something that I find with my issues within the salmon work is that you have, say, Sierra Club, you have Greenpeace, you have the, uh, you know, the Orca Rescues, you have all these people that are actually functioning, you know, that they have offices within a couple of kilometers of one another, but they're never talking to each other. Mm. Um, and so this seems to be um, an opportunity to actually resolve that silo effect. Yeah. And what's always interesting in software or language structure is that how you break a word down into the categories creates basically how that word is, is used. And there's so many different ways to break these down. And I've sent you a, a login that I'd like you to go in and take a look. And then I'd like your feedback and your, your insight into, okay, well, if you're looking at the, the salmon situation, how, how would you want it structured? How would you, like if you were in your media team, you know, what, what would you want to know in the issue coalition? I've come up with my own, and that's what I'm currently working on. But I think this is more of a group intelligence sort of aspect uh, to come up with something that really works. Come up with something at some point. It's just so logical that this works because we're going to introduce a voting system. We're going to introduce um, the concept of a, of a digital vault where you have a vault, your team has a vault. And that's where all the information and digital knowledge is for your particular whether it's a, it could be the issue, it could be the whole shared knowledge community, it could be superhero team, it could be your team. It's just like, I've got a lot of stuff and I would like to share, but I don't want to share it with everyone. I don't want to just throw it out there. I, I want to contain the value and then bring people into that value. And, and in some circumstances, it's a business exchange. And in other circumstances, it's a service exchange. Mm. But we need to create the borders and boundaries around everything i mean that's basically when you recreate a new system you're creating a new language structure to organize everything and 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 until you're at that point in your mind of wanting to recreate the whole world it's pretty difficult to to come up with that idea that doesn't take into account you know we, we, what i'm trying to say is we all go to the level of the scope of our thinking so if you want to solve the salmon issue but you're not taking into account all the salmon across the whole planet you may be missing an important thing or if you're not taking into account you know the, the Norwegian mentality of billionaires you're, you're, you're not taking into account an important thing so we need to bring together in whole systems all the different aspects to solve a problem and generally you know it's a combination of international national provincial community and you know family team and individual levels right there's all these different levels going on at once we may only think at one or two of the levels, but to really understand how to deal with it, we, we have to get like multidimensional. We have to expand the levels of our thinking and that can happen in software, but not if it's designed in a very limiting way. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to really show this to the, the, the circle of influence that I have and that we begin to use it to self-design a software program that really works for us as a community to just live there's all these different aspects and, and we're, we're not using the same reference point of information technology or of language. So that's what the, the aim is, is to create within that shared knowledge community idea, a reference point for all of us to do business together and to do business with other people in both the old paradigm and the new paradigm. Because, you know, the, the whole world's in this old paradigm. We're, we're creating this new paradigm and there's like a, a bottleneck. There's like this you know, the eye of the needle between the paradigms and like we're, we're kind of opening it up and making it possible for people to move from that old structure to the new structure. But it's, uh, as you know, it can be a bit difficult because people get pretty stuck in their ways. But right now, because of what's occurring, that old structure is dying and it's attempting to build something even more controlled and even more sort of outlandish for us. And so we have to take this time to build something new something that works for us so that we're not always just reacting to their insanity. We're actually building something that's working for us. Well, it's, and, and with the end result, or it's, I'm going to ask you, is your, um, the goal of this ultimately 
Is it to organize people so that they can act together directly in real time um, surrounding uh, the different issues of survival? That's, you know, that's one piece, but that's probably one of the most important pieces, right? I mean, if you can get 100,000 people online all doing the same thing at the same time, I mean, you've got a huge power force. And just think about all the people on their laptops sitting at home, like every day. They got two, three hours, they're playing a game. I mean, they're watching videos, they're doing whatever it is. But, you know, if they were given the opportunity to truly help the species shift, you know, completely and, and to um, design your ideal job, like the whole idea behind this is, is you choose how you want to spend your time. You choose how you want to use your gift and you choose who you want to be on your team and that all of these parts start coming together in a way where it's so obvious in terms of, let's say, the very secret plan of seeing how to do it. The first step is you need to get with a team of four. Second step is you get team, five teams of four. And then the third step is you get seven teams of 20. And then all of a sudden you, you're building this larger infrastructure. And because it's values based because you get to choose your values and because you know the, the the general idea behind it is to unite the good people on the planet you know the people who don't want to invade other countries the people who don't want to create wars you know there's this massive amount of people that are tired of the insanity of the war manufacturing kind of world we've grown up in and i don't know about you but i there's nothing in me that wants a war. There's nothing in me that wants to invade and bomb other countries and people, no matter what reasons they use. I just don't agree or believe. I, I think it's manufactured by the very people doing the bombing. So, and to me, just as, as, a, as a human being at this time in my life, knowing what I know, I mean, it's a crime against our species to be doing what they're doing. And those same people that manufacture the wars are doing all the funny business behind the scenes and and, you know, at some point, we just have to you know, take back the power and just build everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that has to enter the mindset of all the people thinking that they are powerful beings, they are superheroes, and now is our time to come together, and this is a tool to do so. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, it certainly appears to me that we are, um, we've moved online for even more of our lives. I, I don't think I could have imagined us moving online even more uh, a couple of months ago, but it seems like there's been a max, a mass uh, transference of interactions. And then we have the options, you know, we always pivot into the environment where um, we just see the options that are lying around. Well, what is lying around? You have YouTube, you have, Facebook, and you have Netflix. You know, basically those are the top three places where people go on the internet. And, let, and let's just look at what happens when people go on Facebook. They scroll down a linear, uh, a, um, a wall, a, new, a news feed, and people know uh, studies have been done of how quickly people numb out, go passive, and go depressed within um, that experience of scrolling through their newsfeed. And, uh, and so you have that, but then you also have Instagram where it, it is basically, you have little fr fractioned off bits of information and most of those are just stimulating and then there's nothing more beyond that. Um, so it, it, it makes sense that when I am in my real life, and I'm basically trying to secure my food chain right now. If I'm not working with people on the phone, I am focused on that. And so how can this help me? More than Facebook, more than YouTube, more than these things, how can the Planetary Guardians website help me with some real time organizing around stuff like um, food security? which is kind of our most basic um, need right now? Uh, good question. I, I think, you know, we're used to sort of acting 
within the organizational structures we grew up in. And, and what are they? They're small business, co-ops, corporations, families, maybe church organizations. So the old paradigm has a number of structures that are the only ways that we sort of know how to organize. But what's happened is on, on the internet, there's all of these games. And games are so much more sophisticated in terms of the chat rooms, in terms of working together, in terms of making points. And it's not connected to real life, but it sure is more important than real life <laughs> to, to many people because the games have gotten so sophisticated. They've gotten so good. They are interesting. They are fun. And you've got millions of people like playing Warcraft or different games like this. So I'd like to create a game that is about real life, that everything you do, in a sense, you get points for, and then we can start to structure how to work as a team, because your media team is basically going to be the way you're going to make a living. And if your media team uh, decides, okay, well, food is going to be an important part, you may actually have one person that's specifically looking at food, while other per people may be looking at different parts of that. And I think, again, it's, it's humans need to use their specialties and their gifts within the arenas they're good at and then rely on other people that are you know good at doing other things and it may be on the superhero team there's one cook or there's one specific farmer there's somebody who has that knowledge the idea is is being with other people who have that knowledge and then you have the agreement to share that knowledge and that you want to share the knowledge to increase the livelihood of everyone in your team and your larger team and your larger community and mm. so people follow what they score points in. So in a lot of these games, you're blowing things up, you're rating bases, you're stealing a lot, you're, you're doing things that may not fit within your ethical practices. But here I, I may, you may ask me a question within a certain type of combo type and I give you an answer and then I get points for that. So there's certain people who are always answering, you know, questions, but they don't get paid. But within this whole idea of the game, you start to see who's contributing, you start to see you know, there's personal points, there's one-on-one -on -one points, there's group points, and then there's community points. So there's, there's, you get different points for doing different things. And sometimes some people are doing great things for the community, but nobody knows about it. And other people are doing great things for certain people, but nobody knows about it. In this situation, we are going to start counting our score and then seeing like at the end of the day, if you scored a thousand points, you know, maybe you didn't make any money, <laughs> but you scored a thousand points. And the problem with our current our economic system is people are evaluating their worth and evaluating what they get done in the day based upon how much money they make when there's so many valuable things walking on, 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 the, on the seashore and the, you know, at nighttime watching lightning come down or something. You could say, I had an, a, you know, a great experience. Maybe you get you know, points for great experiences where you feel a certain way. And then you realize, wow, you know, like if I have a great experience a day, my life is great. Uh, but but we don't sort of keep that we don't keep score on these things and yet humans I think are basic game players we love playing games and so that's that's a, another thing behind this whole idea is how do we turn this whole thing into a game and then to solve the issues we're, we're, we're playing a game to solve the issues of the planet like who is the kindest, you know, who is the smartest, who, who is the one who is actually solving the plastics in the ocean. And there may be two or three people that are doing all the work. And then you have this, okay, we'll pay them. You know, we should be contributing to the lives of the people that are solving the issues that we're all facing. And yet so many of these people are generally, they're not paid. They're fighting against the governments and the corporations, which is insane. You know, the, the very heroes who are helping our planet aren't being compensated for what they're doing. I think that's got to change. Mm. Wow. So we're talking about mobilizing, but we're talking about organizing and actually getting people first interested. And you seem to have to start the system and then let it be inhabited and be taken over by uh, people, by the population. And then uh, we'll see how your system actually starts to uh, come alive and be animated. Well, I mean, like you, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed by knowing a lot of very talented people, people that, in my opinion, have never had the chance to really take on the responsibility of what they could in that old paradigm. But in the new paradigm, to me, it's open ground. 
we can all sort of aim at doing something amazing and why not do it? Like the only thing stopping you is design. The only thing stopping you is not having a, a way to design your ideal job within a larger infrastructure that supports it. And that's one of the research breakthroughs I think that I've had, that there's this, there's a way to design a future whole society and we can do it now based upon the internet, based upon Zoom, based upon all the technologies that finally caught up. Well, we are doing something now for free we couldn't do 15 years ago. It would cost us like $200,000 to do what we're doing right now. And we would never get the chance to do it. They wouldn't let us. Mm. But now everybody can do this. Like that, that's a huge breakthrough for humanity. Mm. And so to take control of your media system, to take control over how we use our media system, who we listen to and how we use that media to make our lives better. Uh, the normal corporate media will not be able to compete because it's always like, it's deceptive. It's always trying to sell us something that we actually don't want. Yeah. Well, and it seems that we've been left with very little options. I think that's my greatest criticism. Just going back now to our current situation is we have, um, you know, the, the official response from the government is just stay at home and wash your hands. There's no talk of immunology. There's no talking about, you know, the immune system. How can you strengthen the immune system? How can you help others to strengthen their immune system? How can you, um, you know, really take control of different parts of your life? It's okay, stay at home, let us deal with it and just accept your cert, you know, accept your government bailout for this. And it seems like for a while, it kept people content. Okay, we're gonna get our rent paid for next month. And okay, I can wash my hands. Okay, well, my hands are getting really dry, okay, you know? And so basically that's where people were left. And so what I'm wondering is, what are some of the activities now that that can be um, that you would like to see engaged in or focused um, upon uh, within the planetary guardians um, uh, the uh, website this whole network of people you know uh, is there anything that's really sticking out in your mind around that well, I think, like I said, where the first step is getting a team of four, it's a big step. Uh, I don't know if you saw the other day, I invited Camille and Gila and Christina into a, a Zoom for the four of us. And that was the beginning of going from this two to a four and giving them a bit of a taste of, well, what would it be like if you guys talked once a week, just like we're doing right now, and had a discussion between the four of you. And a lot of people... I think that they don't consider themselves as their own media. They don't consider that they've got like a lifetime of knowledge that could be shared that would be very helpful to many people. And so to me, it's, it's like the change of the mentality is to go from thinking, okay, individually, I have to make a living in this world to no, I can make it with a team, but not a team that comes from a corporation, not a team that comes from a co-op, not a team that comes from a small business. It's just, I, I, whether my friends, whether people I really respect, whether people I know, boy, if you put that person, that person, and that person, that person together, uh, we've got something very powerful. And the video is the best methodology to share the, show the world what you can do. So, you know, the video has really come into uh, a new world these days because everyone has the ability to make it and there are so many people that are sort of creating videos. Uh, I don't know if you ever see Anomaly, but you know, here's, here's some person who's, you know, he's got like two to 20,000 people watching him as soon as he goes live. And some of his videos, you know, they're in the mi millions and he's just like anyone, he's just someone who started talking and he's a good speaker and he's intelligent and he's bringing attention to certain things and so he builds up a following. And you know, in TikTok and all these other, uh, avenues you know people have a million followers or hundreds of thousands of followers and yet how much knowledge do they have what are they saying so we're shifting into that uh, uh, a very different media world and i think that people everyone has to look at themselves as being a potential news anchor or the host of their own show 
really, really great, great point. I love that because we have so much information and knowledge in us, but it takes, it takes some force, some event, something that we show up to that organizes our thinking and a big value of having these weekly chats with you is that I actually have to allocate the time to really focus and document what is the things that I'm thinking about? What are the things that I've been amassing? Because we're taking in so much media, but we're not actually spending the time, or at least I don't spend the time until now to really write out and really journal, get back to that idea of, of organizing the information and then forming a, not necessarily the opinion even, but the possibility. The, the questions even, you know, what are we wondering? What are we believing? What are we hearing about these different key issues that are going on? Because the world is going on around us and a whole new world is formulating very, very, very quickly. Mm. So we have that and yet we need to be able to show up to something. And so, here we are, um, you're giving us the opportunity to actually organize, what do I know? What are the skills that I have? And then start exchanging, start sharing, and start getting jazzed because I'm actually getting excited about amassing knowledge about different current issues that are happening. And so I, you know, I have never uh, thought so much about uh, the microbiome, the microbiome, for example, what is a virus, for example, what are the opinions, you know, we have so many assumptions, we, we deal in very big block content, you know, well, this is a virus. This is the World Health Organization. This is the government. They are dealing with this. And then you're like, well, what do I know about those three things? And so I can see how unpacking, delineating, and then showing up with people, it seems to be the only thing that actually gets us out of just the hodgepodge into organizing and then disseminating and giving in an exchange. So I really see the value. I really feel the value in relating to you. And even though it seems like a real investment to pull myself out of my weekly life, it's giving me so much in return. So I, I really do encourage people to um, start to organize themselves in this manner uh, because for myself, it's, it's become such a, uh, it's starting to become very rich inside. My mind is starting to get a lot more organized. And I think when you have an organized mind, then you have an organized offering. And then if you contribute, you build an, a powerful organized community. So that's awesome. Well, what I've seen in you and, and you to me are, are like an example of you know, what's throughout Canada. And that's, you know, very advanced souls who have a great deal of knowledge and have been teaching, let's say, one-on-one -on -one or have been doing a lot of the work yourselves. I mean, I don't know if many people know this about Mr. Shambu, but he, he can go in the ocean every day and sit in the water <laughs> and meditate or do his practice. I'm talking ocean, like, 45 minutes, like, minus, like, no one does that. So Yogi Shambu is at a very high level within a certain, you know, yogic practice and very high level of one-on-one -on -one emotional support. And I'm just wondering about, you know, have you thought about bringing, let's say, a team of four people in and starting to train a team of four? Uh, you know, it's, it's a jump, right? It's, it's, it's a bit different from the one-on-one. -on -one. But I, I just think that I've done, I've got two planetary guardian teams now that I'm training, each with four people. And it's exciting. I mean, I do a map each week and then they have the time to sort of like team is, is going through their process of learning the inner mental systems. And I see you as being 
you know, a higher level, like as soon as they've gone through certain levels, then they get to go to the specialty people where now they're, they're, they're upping their game in a sense, but the inflow matrix is like a foundational mental structure so that we can actually understand, okay, well, this is a personal space. This is a one-on-one space. This is a team space. This is a community space and it's a sacred space. And it's a model that everyone knows. They know it from the beginning and then the chat rooms are organized along that line. So what I've seen is we need a distinction, a great to say, now we are in a team space. We're speaking as a team, but over here, we're in a community space and now we're, we're not a team anymore. We're all part of this community. And I think what's happened in terms of what I've seen in the world is that the group space has taken over the community space. Corporations and their agendas are actually groups but they took over all the land where the commons used to be. So there is no community space. Mm. And so it's, it first starts as more of a conceptual idea of what community space is. And then we have to learn how to, to actually create it. And so if we do it online first, I hope that we'll have a better chance of doing it offline. Mm. Mm. I, I see all these people going online now. I see almost every school right now. It's okay. Everyone's at home. Let's throw up a web course. And people are just giving their information away uh, in this way, very almost panicked, right? They're just like, okay, we got to get our content online. We got to get everyone focused. So people are vying for that. Uh, but in the midst of that, I find myself as well. You know, I have in my knowledge base, um, a systematic course of meditation, taking people from the very beginning of being able to still themselves to actually being able to turn themselves inward to be able to illuminate and animate their personality, uh, their, their soul's natural design. And so that is my offering. Um, I would you know, very much love to have people do doing that, you know, um, with me. And, uh, and so that is, you know, I'm starting to build that through video content and audio content. How can um, work, uh, working with multiple people really help with that? Well, ask it, how can it or? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, had some uh, talking about group content. Uh, I have uh, people in the house, so yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm sensing we're coming to the end of our chat. Uh, I guess I would just, if I'm answering this right, I just think that there's a difference between sharing knowledge with your peers, where everyone is, is sort of sharing at a certain level. Sorry, your audio cut out there a bit, Elijah? Oh, because your mic is actually, uh, that's better. That's we're back. Okay, we're back. Okay, little glitch. Um, just saying that, you know, again, like within kind of like the School of Conscious Communication, you have, you know, students, you have facilitators, you have teachers, you have administrators, you have originators, and you have clients. Mm. And so I see you as a teacher who, uh, you know, I, I feel we need to aim at 100 students. If you had 100 students at $100 a month, that's $10,000 a month. And that's something which, you know, is very, I think is very reasonable. And there's a lot of high value you can give to those people. And so even for $100 a month, they could, you know, get the best of Yogi Shambhu. And you could have a one week course video each week that is the next exercise of what they do. And so, you know, within the School of Conscious Communication, this infrastructure is being used so that we can share our knowledge and figure out, okay, when do we charge for it? When do we share with other people? And then when are we of service to the larger whole? Because at some point we can't afford each other, but when we all pitch in, we certainly can do huge things. And that, that to me is when the community comes together. You know, when we've got to build the barn for old Yogi, uh, everyone's going to have a lot of fun and Yogi gets a barn, but the community gets, you know, a, a food stocking place. And, and that used to be the way, but that has disappeared. So I, I think we're going to start doing that where the barn is like this online infotech. We're building the barn together and uh, then we all get to use it. So uh, 
I see a lot of software companies, they, I'm not so sure how they build their software, but looking at how they've done it, I mean, I've just been irritated because there's so many things that are missing and we don't have the chance to do that ourselves, but now we do. So I'm pretty excited about the next year to see what happens because I think uh, all these dreams we have are about to happen in the midst of all this chaos. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to an alternative to the uh, rhetoric making machine that is Facebook and or the comment threads on YouTube, though I actually do appreciate some people's attempts to uh, really give their insights, but it's, it is, it is, it seems like it's a, a rabbit hole that leads to a dead end oftentimes. Um, so thank you so much for uh, sharing this uh, reveal, you know, your unveiling today. And I really, uh, I'm actually honestly excited uh, about the possibility and, and going to be watching this population as it populates itself. So thank you so much, Elijah. Okay, and I would give you a challenge of, of looking at, you know, what does your media team look like and who do you want on your team? And uh, I mean, you might be on my team, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know who's on my team because I don't know, that's, that's a bit of a different team. The people I think are on the team aren't on the team. The people I think in the plan don't even know they're in the plan. So I have to, <laughs> I have to watch. So we might be on the same media team, but maybe we're not. We'll see. Well, thank you, Elijah. And uh, I hope you, uh, yeah, it doesn't storm too much where uh, you are. It looks looking like heavy weather, but uh, beautifully dramatic anyways. Well, I, uh, I love this feature of uh, Zoom, but I, I think I may be you know, looking a bit like a ghost too much, or I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's, it is theatrical at its best, and I expect nothing less from you. Um, great. Thank you, Elijah. Look at that. We're almost at an hour together. And okay. so, yeah, what a, what a treat to be able to organize and be able to uh, download together. Yeah, I look forward to this each week, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next week, and I think uh, we'll... We want to show progress, right? I mean, each week we want to show a little bit of progress. And uh, by the time people see what we've actually done, they can track, oh, wow, this is how they did it. And to me, this is part of the secret plan is, is, is having these chats with people that I feel are very important to our species to uh, bring their knowledge to the world and, and have a, a larger platform for sharing what you know and who you are. So it's my pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Yogi Shambhu. And... Uh, Thank you, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye.